In September 2019, three challenges against Section 377A were filed in the Singapore High Court. This was the second time such lawsuits were filed in Singapore, and they asked the High Court to declare the colonial era law unconstitutional. The High Court dismissed the challenges in March 2020, and the cases were heard again in the Court of Appeal in January 2021. Judgment is currently pending. To tell us more, we have Remy Chu, a lawyer who has worked on both constitutional challenges against Section 377A. Welcome, Remy. Hi, Pam. Welcome to Pink Dot. Thanks, Don. I must say that uh, you look very different than your lawyer black and white suit. Huh? Now, like, very cash. It's called Pink Dot, ma. Pink Dot, huh? Pretty, mm. yeah? Yeah, yeah. Good, good, good. <laughs> Thank you so much for, for coming. Now, um, there are a few questions I have for you. Hmm. Um, and if any of you out there have a question for Remy, please put it in the comment section and we'll try our best to answer it. Um, but first, I just want to say, um, can you, in very, very layman terms, Explain to our viewers who are not lawyers, which is a lot of them, uh, how a constitutional challenge works. Sure. So, you know, the constitution is like the mother of all laws. Oh, okay. Uh, so, the constitution is supposed to be supreme. Okay. And every other law is supposed to be consistent with the constitution. Otherwise, uh, a couple of things can happen. Uh, otherwise, it can be struck down, it can be modified, or it can be interpreted in a way to make it consistent with the Constitution. Uh, what the Constitution does it is it sets out a bunch of rights and protections, uh, one of which is equality before the law. Uh, and so the 3770 case is really simple. Uh, in essence, it says that 3770A, uh, a law that makes uh, an individual criminal just by virtue of who he loves and how he loves that person, that law is not consistent with the equality protection under the Constitution, and so it should be struck down. And so it should. There were two other challenges uh, in 2014 that were not successful. And many people are wondering why um, the three plaintiffs launched another challenge just five years later. How come? Yeah, okay. So uh, we'll take a step back and put it in context, right? Uh, there are 195 countries in the world and Singapore is one out of 69 uh, that still keeps laws like 377A. Uh, what has happened between 2014 and 2019 uh, is quite a few countries have stopped using laws like 377A. Okay. So Singapore is one of a group of three types of countries that keep laws like this. The first, African uh, countries, the second, Middle Eastern countries, and the third, uh, that does overlap with the first two groups, are former British colonies. And what happened between 2014 and 2019 is the Indian Supreme Court, uh, in a country of 1.36 billion people, declared 377 of the Indian Penal Code unconstitutional and uh, struck it down. Uh, at around the same time, uh, you have other former British colonies like Trinidad and Tobago and Botswana that also struck down laws like 377A. And so the feeling in 2019 was it's time for Singapore, a country that prides itself on uh, being ahead of the curve, uh, to take the plunge uh, and put 377A in the dustbin of history where it belongs. Definitely, that is exactly where it belongs in the dustbin. Um, so I just want to ask, you know, this is a really mammoth challenge. Why, why did you and the other lawyers um, take on this challenge? Yeah, you know, for me, it's kind of personal. Uh, I did uh, one of the challenges in 2014 too. Uh, and as the world has changed since then, uh, some things in my life changed too. Uh, and one of the things that changed uh, was I came out. Uh, I wasn't out in 2014 when I took the first set of cases. Uh, by the time uh, I took on the 2019 case, uh, I was happy to tell anyone who'd care to ask uh, that I was out and I was proud. Uh, and personally, it means so much to be able to bring my whole self uh, to this piece of litigation, uh, especially for other people who don't have the privilege of coming out the way I did, I thought it was really important for, uh, for me to represent. Oh, absolutely. You know, um, thank you so much for coming out um, because I think this is a very important um, action and message for people who are still struggling to come out, who are waiting to come out, who are afraid to come out. So I, I, I applaud you. Thank you. Um, and is it, I heard that you are single. 
And ready to mingle. Uh -huh. <laughs> He's got a husky, people. He's got a very, very cute husky. Single, darling, single. This is what fact hacks do. Um, okay, Remy, um, maybe one more question for me. What, what do you think of the current position that our government is taking, uh, which is to um, keep the law but not enforce it? Right, okay. You know, you know Pam, the same, way, the same way love is love, discrimination is discrimination, whatever you call it. And to call a group of people criminals just because of who they are and how they express their love, that's discrimination. And the same way you can't be a little bit pregnant, <laughs> you know, being separate but equal before the law, that's not a thing. Yeah. Discrimination is discrimination and it matters. It, it matters because not just to gay men, but to the broader LGBTQ community too. It's the thin end of the wedge. And I'll give you one example. Uh, Andrea just now was talking about media portrayals of trans people. Mm -hmm. And because 377A makes gay men criminals, it also gives the government and media uh, authorities the excuse to block out and to censor any positive portrayals of LGBTQ people in the media. And what does this mean just to regular people? We were looking at the comments just now, and there was someone saying, my parents are outside, so I can't type too loudly, right? What, what, this, what this means for kids who are being bullied, who are different, who are lonely, is they can't sit down and watch the same TV with their parents on media core and see images of themselves as whole, as healthy, and as accepted. And it's damaging. It's really damaging. Yes, um, I totally agree. And we, we definitely need to remove this law. Um, I'm looking at a question now from uh, uh -huh. our viewer. Um, the judge asked how we can ensure future admin takes same stance as current government. That law won't be enforced. Does this give us hope? Okay, I'm trying to <laughs> understand this with no punctuation. Huh? The judge, uh, judge asked how we can enforce future admin takes uh, uh, same stance as I see, I see. So how can we ensure um, that uh, future admins will not do what the government says it's going to do, which is not enforce the law. Well, um, the simple fact is as long as the law is on the books, uh, the police can investigate even if the government says they're not going to prosecute, right? So having law on the books uh, that is there but not enforced, this is a fiction, okay? Yeah. Um, but you know, the last point I make is this. Uh, the constitutional challenge, it's important, uh, not just because of the law it's trying to repeal, but because of the message it's trying to make, right? Uh, we talked about representation in the media, uh, and the challenge is one way that queer people have an opportunity to take back the narrative uh, and to tell the story on our own terms, right? And, and that's why Pink Dot's important, I think, because it's that one time in the year that we get to tell our stories on our own terms. And it's important for the kids who are lonely, who are scared, to see us speak and tell those stories, right? And when we light up, they look at the lights and they know they're not alone. Yeah. Right? Yes, absolutely. Um, that's what Pink Dot is all about, to show uh, people that they are not alone. Thank you so much, Remy. Uh, Thanks, Pam. Uh, for joining me today. Yay, Remy Chu, everybody! Um, if you want to know more about the constitutional challenge, you can scan the QR code that is on the screen. Thank you so much for being with us.